A major scandal in the skies with Israel's new friends in the Gulf, the UAE. Israel's National Airlines, El Al, said that starting today, it will no longer maintain a full flight schedule to Dubai due to disagreements over security arrangements at the airport. El Al confirmed that tens of thousands of Israelis who had already purchased tickets will not be able to fly because of the reduced flights. Non-stop flights from Tel Aviv to Dubai on El Al and smaller Israeli rivals like Israel and Arkea were among the big fruits of that landmark peace deal two years ago called the Abraham Accords that established ties between the nations. El Al, Israel, and Arkea together offer about 10 flights every day to Dubai. Hundreds of thousands of Israelis have visited Dubai for the first time over the last two years. Countless businesses, investments, and partnerships have been sealed since then. Dubai authorities have so far not commented on the issue. Israel Shin Bet Security Service has voiced concerns which it did not detail publicly about the security protocols at Dubai International Airport. Israeli officials suggested in recent weeks that the UAE capital of Abu Dhabi could serve as an alternative for the Israeli carriers, but industry officials said it is not a commercially viable option. With us now is Yariv Fisher. Yariv is the chairman of the Fly East Group. Yariv, thanks so much for being with me. So much, you know, confusion about what's going on. For two years already almost, Israelis have been flying to Dubai. It seems to be no problem. And now there is this rather mysterious security issue at Dubai that seems to come out of nowhere. What do we know about what's going on? And is there a chance, do you think, it could actually be resolved? Well, I, I do have a lot of experience of working with the GCC and with the Arab world. And uh, I just want to remind you that when we start the peace agreement and when we just started the flight, uh, everything was a bit uh, confusion and nobody knew what will be and what's going on. And at the end, and that's my bottom line here, at the end, everything uh, went smoothly and all the flights went so we have an experience with crisis. The visa was a crisis issues, uh, if you remember. Uh, we had a problem with uh, uh, allowing flight above Saudi, the issue. So we have an experience uh, with the GCC, with the UAE in the past. And I think that will do what will happen this time as well. Uh, things will be okay at the end. Uh, we just need to be patient. I'm speaking with my friend at the UAE and with my friend here with the Israeli carrier. And I'm kind of sure that um, this crisis will be over, hopefully quite soon. Um, I just heard that the... The flights will remain the same for the next few days, so maybe one or two flights of Alal was canceled, but um, for the next of the week, everything will go as smoothly and as the schedule. And I think everything will be all right over there. It's part of um, new culture between the countries, and there is a gap of culture. The Israeli security, you know, we are very strict uh, all around the world. And sometimes uh, things need to take time for both sides to understand. Hopefully, it will be over very, very soon, but... Um, it is. It is a kind of a pain right now. Do you think, Yariv, that because, at least for now, some Israeli flights have been canceled to start this week, will Dubai flights also be allowed to come as scheduled into Tel Aviv? Will there be, you know, because of what El Al is doing now, will the Dubai airlines also be forced to cut their flights? And could this impact trade and business and tourism? Well, I hope not. Uh, actually, Fly Dubai right now, it's one of the only uh, uh, area that Israeli can fly and do business or travel uh, to Southeast Asia. That's one of the only way we can do it these days. Uh, you know, a lot cut the uh, routes and Turkish flight is not the same. So it's kind of the only gap we have right now to fly uh, to Southeast Asia. Uh, so I hope that will not that not what will happen. I really, really hope so. Uh, as I understand, and you see the way the new government is working in Israel and the way that the uh, UAE people are doing business, I think we need time. And I hope that uh, neither or both sides will jump for, uh, I don't know, high risk that uh, will risk of all of what we do in, the, in this peace agreement. I have to say, working with them for the last two years, and we said it all the time, the, the government made a deal and there is an agreement. But now it's on us, the business people, to do the real peace and the real peace between the people. 
So I really hope that uh, neither or both sides will jump for this kind of action that you just said. I really hope not. Do you think damage, uh, the business and uh, damage uh, the, the peace agreement? Do you think that moving the flights to Abu Dhabi, at least perhaps for a few weeks or a few months, to kind of switch airports, could that work in the short term, or that's not a realistic solution? Maybe for one or two flights, not more than that. It's not the real solution. Uh, the Israeli that fly to Dubai that are going on purpose over there. It is a totally different environment, business environment, uh, vacation environment. Uh, crossing with the borders will be a problem. It's not that easy to cross the border between uh, Dubai and Abu Dhabi or Abu Dhabi to Dubai. It can be a solution, but a very, very uh, short one. Yeah. Um, don't mention the, the don't mention the transit flight that uh, could not happen if that would be the path. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I don't think it's a good solution. I think that's why the airline didn't push for this solution. It can be only like a tactical solution for a few flights, not more than that. All right. Well, thank you so much for being with us, uh, Yariv. Great to have you here on the program with your insights into the story. Thanks again. Always a pleasure. Thank you.